time is finally here. It is the 2018 Island Queen Buddy Ferreira Classic. 12 games over the next five days from the beautiful Falmouth Ice Arena. All of them here on MyHockeyLive.com. Hingham, BC High, Falmouth, Archbishop Williams, Reading, Arlington Catholic, Duxbury, and Austin Prep, the eight teams in the tournament. Five of them already have postseason berths sealed up. Two of them still need some help to get in. One of them will not be playing tournament hockey. This is their de facto postseason. And we will be here the entire way. Myself and Rich McClellan. I'm Jake Levin. Rich, here we go. Hey, Jake. It's a time you and I look forward to every single year. We start talking about it. Actually, probably like in June. And here we are. It's the Buddy Ferreira Classic here at the Ice Arena in Falmouth. BC High and Hingham, two of the best teams in the state. And all I can say is, let's go. You know, I'm not a big NASCAR guy, but I'm always told they begin their season with the Super Bowl equivalent, the Daytona 500. That's their first event on the calendar year. Well, the Buddy Ferreira Classic this year is pretty much doing the same thing by beginning with the Hingham BC High game. These are two teams who are, I don't want to say locks, for the Super 8, I think they both should be in the field. But either one of these teams, it would not surprise me if they are one of the last teams standing in March at the TD Garden. And it goes without saying, one of the last teams standing here on Thursday night in the championship game. But so it goes, it's a random draw. Hingham beginning from right to left across the screen. They're 10, 3, and 6, and of course they're an independent. They are now in their 20th year competing as an independent, dating back to the 1997-98 season under old head coach Garrett Regan, Tony Messina now in his 10th season as head coach of the Harbin. BC High, 12-4-1. They won the Catholic Conference yet again. And poke free, here's Will Kenny, a shot and a save by Luke Garrity, the BC High goaltender. Came out atop the slot, knocked out by Joe Dragon, taken away in turn by Trevor O'Brien. Yeah, that's our first shot on goal of the game, and it was a good one. Tried to go high on the uh, blocker side, and a good job by Garrity to get that puck Get his uh, shoulder elevated and keep it from going in his net. BC High, two-time defending Buddy Ferreira Classic champion, each time over Arlington Catholic, and there was BC's first shot. It was blocked. Mike Adamson, a little wrister from the point, didn't find its way through traffic. Grabbed by Peter Kramer, one of the twin Kramer brothers, him and his brother Joseph, freshman out of Bridgewater. Their older brother, Thomas Kramer, is also on the team. Top line center now is a junior. It's the Kramer dynasty here at BC High. Up the near side right, Michael Grant knocked back out by Caleb Wooden, settled by Adamson. He goes across the point to McDonough. Now Adamson, good passing early for the Eagles. They run into a little trouble through the neutral zone. Ultimately carried in by Grant. He took a shoulder in the corner, and that gets the hanging bench all kinds of fired up. Yeah, good job by Joe Jacobs there, bringing the physical. McDonough, shot score! A deflection, and BC High has opened the scoring in the tournament. One shot, one goal. Looked like the goaltender there for Hingham. That's uh, Robbie Kornack. It looked like he wanted a high stick called against BC High. I don't know if that puck changed direction, but definitely Kornack did not see it all the way. Andrew McDonough took the shot, the senior defenseman. I have no idea who deflected it. We'll find out when they announce it on the scoreboard. But it's a 1-0 lead for the Eagles, just 2-16 into the first period. Well, you know, my favorite old adage in hockey is get pucks to the net and good things happen. And that's exactly what happened right there for the Eagles. Just flinging the puck towards the net. Never know what's going to happen. Hit something. Kornak didn't see it. one nothing Eagles. Hingham has given up only 26 goals on the season. They're giving it to Timmy Kelly, the deflection. He's a sophomore. So Kelly from McDonough at 216 of the first. That's the first goal of this year's Buddy Ferreira Classic. Of course, the tournament named in honor of the former Falmouth head coach, Buddy Ferreira. He stepped down at the end of the 2013 season, replaced by Paul Moore. Got to think Buddy is probably in the building. Uh, he likes to uh, hang out in the top of the uh, top of the back row, back on the uh, right-hand side there, where near the Hingham net right now. Sounds about right. The tournament itself has existed for 21 years now, as uh, we learned the other day. Old enough to drink. <laughs> it began as the Falmouth tournament back in the late 90s. Falmouth, BC High, Archbishop Williams, some of the founding members. It then expanded to eight teams. 
early in the 2000s. Hanging has been part of it ever since. You know, back in the day, Springfield Cathedral, now Pope Francis, used to be a part of the uh, tournament. Four public schools, four Catholic schools. That's the format. The matchups, they change every year, although it's not a perfect science. You know, the one team that used to be in this tournament that I wish still was? The Barnstable Red Raiders. But the Red Raiders, uh, back in the day, found they always came to Falmouth needing points. And most of the time they left town still needing points. That's why Waltham left at the end of the 2014-15 season, since replaced by the Reading Rockets. And boy, would Waltham have been fun in the tournament this year after their big win over Central Catholic about two weeks ago now, really 10 days. Tell you what, Jacob Clark just brought the uh, offensive zone uh, checking there for the Harbor men. Seems to me that Hingham definitely uh, has physicality on their uh, to-do list today. Hingham always plays a tough physical game. Always seems to have good goaltending and always seems to have just enough on the offensive end. They've only scored 51 goals on the season. That's a little bit down a tick from last year's pace. They wound up around 70 goals and obviously plenty of time left, but you sense it won't be an offensive explosion that's going to win this tournament for the heart. But it's going to be some 2-1, to one, maybe 3-2 to two type games. Here's Mav Woods for the Eagles, a backhander and a save by Kornak. Mav Woods, also an outstanding lacrosse player for BC High. It's on the team that fell to Lincoln Sudbury in the Division I state championship game a season ago. Yeah, great job by him at the blue line to tip it ahead to himself and then to show a little burst of speed, get to the net, put one on net, and it bounced a little funny there on Kornak, but he's able to hold on. Woods was looking to put another puck to the net, got deflected by Grant to the corner. And Grant again. Grant really started the action that led to BC's goal. He carried the puck over the blue line and ultimately found its way out to Adamson at the point who took the shot that was deflected. Healy didn't get an assist, or Grant I should say. Jake Higgins in his own end slaps it off the glass. Jake Higgins, the younger brother of Frankie Higgins, one of the captains of the Harlemen. Both lacrosse players in addition to hockey. Here's Jake up the near side left, curling around along the goal line, a shot, and it sails high up into the net, and good bid by Higgins. Nice job there by Higgins. I tell you what, keeping it um, with one hand, shading off the defender, and then able to get a shot off that just skied over the net a little bit. It looks like it went off of his stick, so the, the draw will come outside the zone, but that's a great job of trying to make something out of nothing there. Healy over to Callow. Callow is able to glove it down through the official's crease. Settled by Joe Jacobs in his own end. Poked free. Kornak was in a ready position. Shot was blocked by Findlay around the dot. And with a breakout, that's Finley. Slides it across for Paul Forbes, the only freshman on Hingham's roster this year. Hingham always tends to have a veteran team. Hard to make this roster as a freshman. I'm going way back here, dating myself, but uh, Tony Messina's first year on the job, my senior year of high school, they did not have a single freshman who played on the varsity team. Well, you know what? Freshmen are 14 and 15 years old, and you know, you're going up against a high school senior. That is literally the boys against the men. That's not to say it's never happened. Well, there's a great freshman we're going to see later today on the Falmouth team. There's a shot from atop the near circle by Jake Quilty, and that's gobbled up by Garrity. 8.40 to go in the first period. Uh, J.P. Turner for the Falmouth Clippers, one of the uh, top scorers in the state. I believe he's in the uh, top 10. Not bad for a freshman, get 20 goals already. This could really be his breakout party. Not that he hasn't already broken up, but in terms of gaining some more statewide attention, Falmouth could play one of these two teams later on in the tournament. That would certainly raise his profile. Clippers 13, 3 and 3, and again, they're playing tonight against Archies at 7. DC had more attacking zone time, and that is up into the netting. Thomas Kramer took a shot. Deflected up high on him, right in front of the American and Canadian flag. Yeah, hang him lucky they got a piece of that, because Kramer was about uh, a stick blade length from the edge of the crease there. Kornak would have had to react very quickly to get a piece of that puck. Hengman BC High also met in last year's Classic. It was in a semifinal game, won two to one by BC. That was a very chippy game from what I recall. 
No, no, no signs of that quite yet. And that's a shot that was blocked. Jake Higgins sent it on net, turned away by Garrity with the pad. Puck took a funny bounce there, but uh, keeper able to make the save for the uh, Eagles. And here they go to the stretch. Thomas Kramer up the middle, and Jake Higgins with an excellent stick check to knock him off the play. Uh, BC uh, Kramer looked like you got to get called for interference there in the offensive zone, but the uh, referees are going to let that go. Stick handled by Healy, dumps it into the near corner. Jake Higgins logging a lot of minutes early for the Harbormen. Up ice for Tim Carroll. Carroll in the neutral zone, he gets leveled by Peter Kramer. Good hitting that it avoided the head near the slot. No dragon couldn't connect. Healy towards the corner. With Danny Ooh. O'Connell in mind, and Kornak's gonna have to make a save. She got 7-10 to go on the first. Waiting on the doorstep was Peter Kramer. Tell you what, the captain Joe Dragon there. Great move behind the net. Backhand pass to the slot for the shot. Love watching BC High play because the creativity is just next level. BC High has won each of the last two Island Queen Buddy Ferreira Classics, each over Ireland and Catholic. <laughs> appears though we're going to get a uh, repeat of that for a third time, but you never know. Just going to say, uh, odds are not for a three-peat performance of that final. The Cougars are currently the only team eliminated from postseason contention that's in this field. Redding and Archies also need some help down here. Redding only needs two points. Archies needs five. Yeah. So they have to go 2-0-1 at worst. Yeah, the Archies either needs to win this thing or secure a tie somewhere along the way, but stay in the loser's bracket, maybe lose the shootout. The last thing you want to do is to make the finals and have to play BC High with your postseason life on the line. Or hang them for that matter. Here's Grant Arister and Kornak makes the save. He couldn't hang on, dropped it, falls on top. 6-13 left in the first. Yeah, you got to feel for the Bishops. I mean, you open up the tournament needing points, and oh, by the way, that Falmouth team that's usually, you know, just average, one of the best public schools in the state this year. Ooh. Got a shot by Grant, goes over the crossbar. Far point, Adamson, around the perimeter. Paul Forbes with his head on a swivel, got knocked down around the half wall. Tommy Kornack over in the corner. Somebody lost a stick. It was Timmy Kelly, the goal scorer for the Eagles. Kornack up ice. Settled by Forbes. Now back for Kornack, trying to go up to a forward. Terrence Concanon went off of his skate. Back behind the net, Adamson slid it over for Owen Callow. Callow across the ice and up. Touch and go pass. Adamson over the blue line and a screen set by Mav Woods. Adamson to the corner, nearly lost an edge. Adamson, excellent puck control. A shot from atop the slot was blocked. It's Frankie Higgins for the Harbourman. Higgins trying to burst through the middle, ran into three BC High jerseys. Yeah, it's not a, uh, a wall you want to try and go through there. That's a wrister by C.J. Martin, junior forward out of Milton, and it's up into the netting. Another stop at 5.09 left in the first. So far, pretty even action we got here, uh, Jake. The uh, two teams going back and forth. BC High scoring a little bit of a fluky goal, but uh, you know, for the most part, first 10 minutes of this game really even. That's pretty much what we expected from two of the best teams in uh, Massachusetts. BC High, champions of the Catholic Conference yet again. Locked that up a while ago. The Catholic Conference was decided before February even began. That's how good they are. And, you know, hang on. King of the Independents. 20th year now as an Independent. They have made the postseason all but one of those years. They've made the Super 8 all but, I believe it is three. 07, 2013, and 2015 are the only misses. And in one of those years, they went and won the state tournament. No goal, and this Annika kicked in. BC High with some excellent zone time. That was a simple wrister from the point from P.J. Donahue. Went on to Kornak, and the rule was kicked in, so now we get a draw outside the hang of men. Yeah, you know, just at the shot, made it all the way to the goal, was uh, 
pretty nuts because there was a ton of traffic in front of the net. It was like 128 at five o'clock. Somehow it got there to the uh, to the goal. Save was made, and then the Eagles uh, little field goal kick, and Steve Guskowski would have been proud. That was it on the mark. John Flaherty got a brief explanation from the official. Seemed satisfied. Flash Flaherty, one of the nicer coaches in the state. Always a pleasure with him. There's Tommy Kornack, dumps it into the corner. First one there is Marshall Terrez. Top line out there for the Hardman. Terrez trying to free it to the point for Jake Higgins. There's Clark. Trying to find Sullivan. Tell you what, Jake, next four minutes of this period, to, you know, until the buzzer, really important for the Harbor men. They need to get through this period only down one or maybe get that equalizer because right now the Eagles are starting to assert themselves, starting to get to put the play in the game they want to play. Here's Sullivan for Hingham, a shot and a save by Garrity with the glove down in that catcher's stance and attacking end draw. This will be good for the Harbor Yeah, uh, Garrity got lucky there. He had to turn over the uh, hand on the uh, catch there. That is not the way you want to catch a hockey puck because it definitely is difficult to keep it in the webbing. It'll pop on you. Garrity hasn't played every game for the Eagles this season. Dealt with some injuries early on. BC High as a team, though, has given up only 19 goals as Garrity makes yet another save. You do the math, that's just a tick more than a goal per game. That is incredible. When I was uh, researching this tournament, I had to double check. I was like, really? They've only given up 19 goals? I've seen games where I've seen, or weeks, I've seen 19 goals in a week. 19 goals in 17 games entering today. The Hingham already at a disadvantage. Here's John Sullivan. He can change that. Fanned on a wrist. It was knocked free by Adamson. He got pushed further by Danny O'Connell. Now the Eagles with some momentum up to the attacking end. It's Dragon slid it across to the slot. Knocked away by Tim Carroll. Adamson fanned on a wrist. It was poked free by Sullivan. Adamson regained his bearing. Sent it along the perimeter. Joe Jacobs grabs it for the Harriman. Moving right to left across the ice. Now on the near side, he's going to gain the line. Shouldered off by Grant. The Eagles in transition. It's Healy. Healy up the near side right. Healy wanted a pass. He's going to flutter it towards the net off a stick. And waiting for it like Doug Mirabelli and a Tim Wakefield fastball. Kornak is able to hang on. You know, to get back to the 19 goals allowed, there's a team that I covered, Jake. And I won't name names because I don't want to embarrass anyone. But in uh, two games this week, they gave up 16 goals. So to only give up 19 is pretty amazing for an entire season. Far corner for Hingham, that's Ryan Riley. In transition come the Eagles, Grant. The near side right, gains the line, tried to force it to the middle, went off a stick. In the corner, it's Higgins. Settled by Kornak behind the net. Tommy Kornak sent the pass out to his right, was looking for Con Cannon. The Eagles not allowing a clean breakout for the Harbourman. Here's Riley. He gets leveled by P.J. Donahue, just simply stood in his way. Inside two minutes to go on the first. Kramer around Kornak. So stick handling. Kramer looks back forward. Chips it over to Lakis. Lakis out of the corner, looking for Kramer in the slot, and a slowly rolling puck. It's fallen on top of by Kornak with a minute 45 to go. Yeah, Jake Higgins able to get a shin pad on that shot, which is usually a good thing, but uh, changed the direction of the puck, and it nearly hit that far side pipe, but Hingham uh, gets a break, went a little wide. 145 left to play in this very tight first period. Puck loose in the circle, a shot taken by Kramer, was blocked, Quilty pokes it out. Quilty in the neutral zone, intercepted by Lakis. Lakis denied entry by Quilty, it's Will Kenny up the middle for the Hardman, poked away by Healy as he tried to enter the defensive end. Kramer trying to go to his brother, Joseph. Some driftwood out there on the, uh, on the ice right now. Could make things interesting here if the puck takes a funny bounce. Joe Jacobs out to Will Kenny. Kenny up the far side right is going to dump it in and give chase. Right shotgun with him, Trevor O'Brien. 
Paolo first of the puck, and he shows him off the play. Backhand bid by O'Brien goes to the corner where Thomas Kramer settles it for the Eagles. Don't think that actually got to the net. I think it rolled a little bit wide, but a nice offensive chance there for the Harbourman. Hornack breaks up a long stretch pass intended for Joe Drack, and now Clark across the blue line to Terrace. Terrace, a backhand save by Gerdy. That's the best opportunity for the Harbourman thus far. What a great crossover move by Terrace. I mean, the bur first of all, the pass came at him at about 100 miles an hour, and they were only three feet apart. Somehow controls it, does a little crossover dangle, and able to get the shot off to the near side. Blocker saved there for the Eagles, and uh, i tell you what, we're seeing why they've only given up 19 goals there, Jake. Terrace, a C on his sweater. He's been a Harriman since his freshman year on the varsity, I should say. You know all about his game-winning goal in the state championship game that year. And it end his career the same way it began. BC in the attacking end, however, late in the period. Settled by Dunderdale at the point. Dunderdale for O'Connell. O'Connell moves out up top. Had room to shoot. Doubled back. Now goes into the far circle. A shot blocked by Kenny. Three seconds to go. Addison's going to have to shoot it. Blocked again in traffic in front. And the first period comes to an end. It's 1-0 BC high. Not a bad opening 15 minutes for the uh, tournament here in Falmouth, Jake. Shots in the first period. BC High had seven. The Harbor men had six. The only goal was by Tim Kelly. Came 2-16 into the first period. And that's where we stand after 15 minutes. It is 1-0, uh, I'm sorry, 1-0 BC High. And we'll take this time to thank some of our sponsors here on My Hockey Live. Mass Lifeguards in the DCR. The Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation is actively recruiting lifeguards to fill summer lifeguard jobs. If you're a qualified swimmer and are interested in applying for a summer lifeguard position, this is a great opportunity to do what you love and make $1,200 every two weeks while doing it. Visit MassLifeguard.com to register today. And by Full Spectrum Benefits. If you run a business, big or small, now is time to engage the team at Full Spectrum Benefits. There's no more time for business as usual. Medical premiums are skyrocketing. Employees get confused in the Alphabet Soup of Healthcare. These guys get it. With over three decades of employee benefit experience, the Full Spectrum team will help you deploy an employee benefit strategy that allows you to focus on managing and growing your business. Spend a lot of money on benefits, they should not be a burden. For free consultation, call Bill Higgins, 617-872-9944, or visit their website, www.fullspectrumbenefits.com. And by Sullivan Tire, if you're looking for exceptional auto service, head on down to Sullivan Tire. Family owned and operated, they've been serving New England for over 60 years. Their highly trained staff will give you a hand with any of your auto needs. Sullivan Tire offers brand name tires and parts at a price that can't be beat. They're always here, get you there. And by Highview Custom Builders, founded in 1990, Highview Custom Builders has overseen countless home renovations across the South Shore, Metro West, and beyond. From a simple fix-up to a full-scale rebuild, Highview Custom Builders is the area leader in designing your dream home and making it the very best it can be. To learn more, contact Steve at HighviewCustom at Hotmail.com. And by Crow's Landing, established in 2013. Crow's Landing is one of the top new restaurants with a fantastic menu and fast dining option in the Hingham area. All right, that's going to do it for the first period. We'll be back in about 11 minutes here on MyHockeyLive.com. We will have plenty of intermission activity uh, in terms of interviews and things of that nature. Over the course of the day, we will be quiet uh, this first period, however. Welcome back for the second period between the Hingham Harbman and the BC High Eagles. It's a 1-0 lead for BC High. Just 2-16 into regulation. Timmy Kelly deflected. An Andrew McDonough offering from the point. That's all the scoring we've gotten in this one, Rich, in what was a pretty even uh, first 15 minutes, at least in terms of shot on shots on goal. Yeah, I think the uh, the Eagles might have had a slight uh, territorial edge. Yes. But for the most part, I'd say it was pretty even. Uh, Hingham looking to bring the physical, as is their want to do. They like to play that brand of hockey. The Eagles uh, getting up and down the ice, definitely uh, looking to hit some uh, stretch passes. Looking to uh, speed the game up a little bit. Nice contrast in styles. Uh, I gotta think that the game may open up a little bit here in the second. 
little feeling out process between two of the uh, top dogs in the uh, state, and both teams want to uh, claim this yard as their own. So uh, see what happens here. But for Hingham, I think they need to uh, generate a little more offense. They did have a nice try late in the first period, a little uh, crossover action where uh, shot skied over the net. But uh, need more of that. I mean, it needs to get pucks to the net because the BC High goal wasn't a pretty one. It was a deflection. Teams have switched sides. BC High now heading right to left across the screen. Hingham left to right in an icing. Just 10 seconds in, Hingham will get an attacking end draw. I used to work with a uh, writer well, I worked for my uh, my paper, The Enterprise. He was a uh, hockey writer from the uh, Cape Cod Times. And I'll tell you what, he hated icing. He used to count them and be like, you know how much time we're missing because of icing? <laughs> Rob Duca. Wouldn't hate to see some sort of hybrid icing uh, adopted by the MIAA, but that would require probably a third official on the ice for every game. and. You know, it becomes a budgetary concern. As Higgins shoves the puck alive, uh, to keep it alive in the attacking end. Won't get any more shots out of it, though. Here come the Eagles carrying it up. Joseph Kramer slides through the crease. Hang him out in transition. It's off of Quilty's skates. Retreating back, Sean Healy. Quilty almost got it back. Healy reacted in time to shoulder Quilty away. A play down in the corner. That was Kenny who went down. No penalties through 15 minutes and change now. Ooh. And I feel like we're uh, getting pretty close to something being called. It is a physical game right now. Here's Jacob Clark for the Hardman. Dances around Healy. Turns on the brakes. And Adamson shoved him away. Uh, Trevor O'Brien in the offensive zone just got treated like a Plinko chip coming down the wall. O'Brien frees it for Jake Higgins. Jake Higgins was well covered by Thomas Kramer, slid it around the perimeter. Terez collects it in the far corner. Terez at the half boards, up top for Joe Jacobs, and it's intercepted. Two on one, coming for the Eagles. Here comes Kramer on a feed from Lakis, and he barely got the shot off at all. It was well covered by Hingham. Good job getting back by both Jake Higgins and Joe Jacobs. I'll tell you what, bullet dodge there for the Harvardman. Bad giveaway at the offensive blue line leads to a two on one break for the Eagles. BC High not able to get off the kind of shot that they want there. Higgins just dodged a bullet. Hardman with a break out of their own. Up the far side left, it's Tim Carroll. Puck was dropped, shot, score! John Sullivan! Tim Carroll's shot was blocked. John Sullivan there to tie the game 1-51. Into the second period. Well, Sullivan doing a nice job trailing the play there. Don't know if that was a drop pass or a tip there. They came back to him, but it found him right in front of that Clover Company sign. And he able to risk one with that left-handed shot. And just like that, just 152 into the second period. And we have ourselves a tie hockey game. 1-1 one, one between the Eagles and the Harvardmen, two elite goal prevention teams. It's not going to be much more offense in this one. It feels safe to say. So Sullivan from Timmy Carroll, just 151 into the second period. Wood knocks down a pass that was intended up top for Joe Dragon. Good day to be named Timmy here at the rink, apparently. Timmy Carroll with the assist on that goal. Timmy Kelly for BC High with the goal for the Eagles. Both goals coming off deflections of sorts. That was a true shot for Sullivan. It was the way he got the puck. Maybe not the most conventional. Third line out for the Harriman. Findlay will take the draw. Mav Woods won it to the wall. Got to think that's a that's a shot Garrity would like to have back because that's a perimeter wrist shot. And as a goaltender, those are the ones you have to save. Only the 20th goal given up by BC High all season long. Garrity nonchalantly snags a wrister out of midair. Danny Packard with the offering for the Harvardman. 12-14 to go in the second period. Now, so far, we got ourselves a, uh, a very tight game, and now we're dead even. Next goal, as they say, it's going to be huge, Jake. Huge. BC High has a slightly more potent offense than Hingham. They've scored 63 goals on the season. Hingham only 
52. Here's Grant. Grant around the end wall. Out to the slot, and he couldn't connect with Woods. It's going to go all the way back to the BC defensive end. Garrity tends the puck, leaves it for Healy. I talked to Tony Messina about that a little bit before the game, Jake. I said, so defense first, huh, Tony? And he said, Rich, we play the way that we have to play. So he believes that defense has to be their number one priority, and he, he just figures goals will come, and more often than not, they've had, they've had enough. Here's a two-on-one developing for the Eagles. That's Callow in, and a save by Kornak. He had Kelly off to his left in the slot, decided to hang on to it. Remember that BC team a few years ago with Kaiser Ray and Billy Roach and Jason Dolbey? They had 100 goals by the time they got to Falmouth. Well, let me tell you, we got to give credit there to Tommy Cormack on the uh, back check. He was able to take away, take away the far side. He, by doing so, he forced the shooter to have to shoot and gave his goaltender a good uh, angle. So that little, little play there by the defenseman helped save a goal. His brother Robbie Kornak made yet another save off a wrist shot that time from Adamson, who gets it back, slides to McDonough. And the puck was bouncing around. He couldn't hang on. Poked free by Will Kenny. It's a mad dash to the corner. Adamson cuts off the angle. You know, Jake, we've had some funny bounces. I wonder, it's been a little warmer here in Falmouth the last couple of days. I wonder if that might affect the surface and give it a little more, a uh, little hop, you know? It's almost 50 yesterday. It's cooled down a bit today, but it's still... You know, unseasonably warm for the middle of February. It's probably about 38, 39 degrees. There's a shot. Jake Higgins turned away by Garrity. This is going to go right on Kornak. He's going to hang on top. He saw the Kramers coming. I almost said Thomas Kramer, but he had two Kramers coming in on him. And decides to hang on. Kramer versus Kramer. A uh, really sad movie from the 80s. <laughs> I think it was about divorce. You know, Rich, speaking of Kramers, I was looking at the rosters for uh, later on. And there's a player on Ireland and Catholic whose first name is Cosmo. Oh, that is fantastic. Now, it doesn't look like he plays much. Uh, giddy up, though. I'm hoping that Dan Shine decides to break him out today because the possibilities are endless. Uh. Hang him in the attacking end. There's Terez being held in the corner by Dragon. Danny O'Connell up the near side left. Gets around a slash from Terez. Knocked out by Wood. And underneath the stick of Donahue couldn't settle it. See, another one of those funky hops there, Jake. That puck just got on edge and bounced right over his stick blade. I was here about 45 minutes before the game started. And I saw them working on the edges here. They were chipping around, just trying to even things out. And I guess that's something to keep an eye on over the next couple of days. Not just uh, shifts here. That's an offering from Healy, blocked by Kornak. Healy's going to get it back in the neutral zone, up ice, and between the legs of Coleman Benson. Healy gets it back, works around Joe Sullivan. You never know what kind of weather you're going to get down here in Falmouth. It seems like every year there's one beautiful day like today, but there might be a snowstorm on Monday. Uh, you never know. It's Cape Cod. If you don't like the uh, weather, just wait a few minutes. Through the Falmouth logo at center ice. Jacobs knocked it back up. Tended for Tim Carroll. That's Adamson. McDonough's going to turn on the brakes in the corner. He'll wind up leaving it for Matt Kahane. Matt Kahane, a sophomore for the Eagles out of Quincy. Hingham's struggling a bit to clear it out of their own end, and the patience pays off. It's a two-on-two. Two. Slid in by Tim Carroll, who will go off for a change. Some fresh legs for the Harbourman. Eight and a half to go in the second period. Pass into no man's land for the Eagles, and Minkin throwing his shoulder around. Settled by Kahane. Kornak jumps up around the red line, going to dump it back into the attacking end for the Harbourman. And get back on side and try to trap the Eagles. Jumping the route, Jake Higgins. Higgins over the blue line, goes the puck. He had to go around. It was a good screen set by Adamson. Now McDonough for Adamson. Eagles working in this corner. Adamson goes around the net, carries the puck out, nearly turns it over in the slot. 
And he'll ice the puck with 7.56 to go in the second period. Nice forechecking uh, shift there for the Harbormen. They're able to put some pressure on the BC High defense. Kept the puck down in their end. They weren't able to control it, but what they were able to do was force an icing. Now they get some fresh legs out there and they get an offensive zone draw. Top line out for the Harbormen. Frankie Higgins on the draw, posed by Mav Woods. Woods is able to poke it up to Grant. Grant, the far side right, around the defenseman. Grant in, shot, score! Pretty simple move by Michael Grant with a great finish. Yeah, you're going to figure that's going to be an unassisted goal, I would think. Grant just picked that up right at the edge of the face-off circle and just, like, went from second gear to fifth gear. He just blew right past the defense, kept it on his forehand, and tucked it glove side high. And uh, just like that, here at 7-12 uh, and in the second period, the Eagles take a 2-1 lead. Grant out looking for more. It's BC High's second lead of the game. They have not trailed. They've given an assist to Sean Healy. That's number 22 in your program. Nav Woods can't get a clear. Kept alive by Jacobs just onside. The official is taking a good look at it. Make sure it stayed on the blue line. Lobbed up Terez, trying to track it down in the circle. Terez has it. Hammered off the play by Callow. Saved by Jacobs near point. Terez poked it through the circle. Woods knocked it down. Callow, an outlet for Healy. Grant trying to get around Wooden again. Shot saved. Pornak, it's way out up top. Played to safety. Now Terez, the near side right, going to dump it in. Thomas Kramer. How about the strength of Michael Grant to hold off the defense there and it get a shot off? Kramer to Kramer. That's well wide. That was Thomas Kramer with a feed to Joseph Kramer. Puck in no man's land. Joe Sullivan lost a foot race. Sent back up by Adamson. Fans on a breakout pass. Turns around and sends it off the sideboards. Couldn't connect with Thomas Kramer, who comes up with it. Takes a shot. Turned away by Kornak to the half wall. That's Lakis. Behind the net for Thomas Kramer. Out of the corner for Peter Kramer. Peter Kramer, a shot goes up into the netting. 6.05 left in the period. I'd say right now the Eagles are starting to feel the rhythm of this game, and they are taking control. Hingham has got to find a way to defend better and get the puck up the ice, get themselves some more offensive chances, because you can't beat BC high if you can't put the puck on net. BC with some good zone time. Lakis curls out of the near corner for Adamson at the point. A wrister. It was blocked in front. Didn't reach Kornak. Far side of Sullivan, knocks it out. Donahue across for Adamson. Up the middle, looking for Lakis. Some bodies banging around on the sidewall. Thomas Kramer out of the corner, couldn't connect with Dragon. Poked free by Timmy Carroll. Timmy Carroll looking for John Sullivan. That was the connection for Hingham on their only goal. Great closing speed there by the Eagles. For a second there, it looked like Hingham could have a three on one, and all of a sudden the Eagles had everybody back. Adamson playing deep safety, knocked down a breakout pass from the Hardman. Shot in Kornak. Is able to seal down the post as Peter Kramer was coming up the left. He went crashing down into the wall along with Danny O'Connell. Looks like a save with 5.16 left in the first. Yeah, right now. Second rather. Hingham's like a stunned boxer, Jake. Shots are 10 to 3. They're uh, reeling a little bit. They have to find their footing and uh, start hitting back, but this game could get away from them. Wooden around the edges. Saved by Dunderdale. Dunderdale's looking for Dragon on the wing, and it splits through the BC defenders. McDonough gives it a ride. Kornak is going to leave it for Jacobs. Gives it away to Dragon. Dragon and Wooden battling for the puck around the apron of the goal. Still loose off to the side, out in the middle. Comes Ryan Riley. Ryan Riley one-on-one. -on -one. Riley with a dump into the corner. Had Adamson in his way. Near side, O'Connell able to get around Jacobs. O'Connell to the slot, to the backhander, and Kornak in a right position. Makes the save on the doorstep, and we have our first sign of some real chippiness after the whistle. Frankie Higgins 
and Peter Kramer not pleased with one another, but a stoppage, 431 left. Well, you know what? If you're Kingham, I think that's a good thing. You know, show some emotion. Get out there and play with a chip on your shoulder. You're down 2-1. to one. You're getting outshot 11-3 right now. Going to make something happen. You need a big hit. You need something that's going to rise that emotion level and uh, get your team back into this hockey game. Blowing an edge is Healy. Here comes the Harborman. That's Quilty Arister, and it's wide off the end boards. Good bid for the Harborman. Odd man rush, but it's off the mark. Uh, big missed opportunity there for Hingham. They had a two-on-one and not able to get the puck to the net. That was saved by Kornak, and in front goes up into the protective netting. Hingham should get another attacking end draw. Winner of this game will play the winner of the Austin Prep-Duxbury game that's coming up at 3 o'clock. The loser play the loser of Austin Prep and Duxbury. Higgins sent it back to the near side and almost home on that wing in the corner for the Harvardman. BC with a clear out. That's Grant intercepted by Kornak through the neutral zone. It's on sides. Here's Frankie Higgins. Higgins can't finish a move through the circle. Adamson up ice. Looking for Kelly. Poke free. Here comes Will Kenny. Lobs it into the opposite corner. Higgins looks back and finds the puck around the half boards. Quilty poked it free. It's loose. Thomas Kramer just off the bench. He's going to wait for some reinforcements, and he drops it for Mav Woods. Woods for Grant. Deflected to the far corner. Donahue. Fake a slap pass. Went around the edges. In no man's land. Settled you, by Kelly. Trying to split through the BC defense right now is like trying to throw a football through uh, the forest without hitting a tree. Thomas Kramer with a shot on the doorstep. Kornak made the save through traffic. Coming out was Lakis on that wrister is well off the mark, but BC just dominating Hingham right now in their attacking end. Saved by Adamson at the half boards. Kenny trying to knock it free and finally does. Bounces over the stick of Joseph Kramer. Yeah, dangerous time right now for the Harbormen. Only three minutes left in this period. They have got to get to the horn. Down only one. Kramer is shot. Kornak got a piece of it. Jacobs also had his skate in the way. McDonough crossed the blue line for Dunderdale. His shot blocked. Dunderdale going to get it back atop the circle. A slap shot. Got the deflection. Goes to the end wall. Around the apron of the goal is Lakis. Lakis dances away from contact. We have a delayed call coming against Hingham. Going from bad to worse for the Harbman. Great zone time for the Eagles. Thomas Kramer moves way up high. Feeds it around to his brother, Peter Kramer. Held up by O'Brien. Still free for the Eagles. Lake is back out to Thomas Kramer. Near side, it's McDonough's shot. And finally, holding the play dead after Hengen makes contact. All right, Tony Messina right now has to really give some thought to maybe taking his time out. Because he's got some tired guys out there. He needs to get his best skaters out on the ice to kill this penalty. There are two minutes left in the 2.03 remaining here in the second period. And this is the most important part of the game so far for the uh, Harbor men, uh, Jake. I almost called you Tony. Um, they have got to get through this and survive. The uh, four skaters on the ice have the most important job of the night so far for uh, Hingham. DC high, unless they score, will be on the power play of the remainder of this period. But here's Joe Jacobs. Fanned on a wrister. Had a chance. Frankie Higgins was alongside him to the left. A good shorthanded bid for the Harvardman goes for none. Here's O'Connell. O'Connell curls out of the corner on the far side and turned away by Kornak. Chipped out up top. Healy saves it for the Eagles. For Dragon, down chances around Wooden. Kornak left his post to knock it away. Nice job by Kornak there. It's a little uh, risky proposition, but I like where he's at. Adamson's slap shot was saved by Kornak. 123 left in the period. 120 left on the penalty against Joe Jacobs. Yeah, the uh, Eagles can really put a stranglehold on this game right now if they're able to pop one here in the final uh, 120. The way they shoot the puck, I got to think they're going to want to use the uh, points here. Get something to the net from the perimeter. Will Kenny knocked it out. So far, so good on the PK for Hingham. Kenny in front, couldn't connect to Terrence. Jake Higgins was a little tentative, but did knock it back away from his own end. Now Healy redirects it. Puck spinner in. Kramer. Great four checking right there. 
Gets around Terez. Kramer still on the puck, but Terez knocks away from him again. Terez just bullies Kramer away from the puck. There's a bid from Dragon. A good wrist shot goes off the end glass inside a minute to go in the second period. Terez kind of lucky that the uh, referees are giving them a little leniency here. Could have got called for a hook or a hold, but what a great effort he just showed. Kramer. Now Adamson saves it for the Eagles. Blocked off the body of Kornak in front. Near side, Healy with a good pass and knocked away by Tommy Kornak. Uh, Terra's in, unable to get the puck out of the zone there, and that could be problematic. Puck flutters around, and finally Hingham gets a clear. 12 seconds left on the PK. Adamson for Healy over the blue line. Healy with patience up for O'Connell. Robbie Kornak out of the goal, sends it off the half boards. Back to five on five hockey. Only a couple seconds left in the period. O'Connell's got to shoot. Good dot out to Healy and the clock expires. A good late rush for the Eagles. I think that would have counted, Jake. That was that was going to be really close. Really close. Hingham dodges a bullet at the end of the second period, but BC ends the middle 15 the same way they ended the first 15 with a one goal lead. It's now 2-1. to one. Hingham had tied it. John Sullivan's goal. It was Sean Healy giving BC High the lead back with an unbelievable individual effort. So we'll take this time to thank our sponsors here on My Hockey Live. Sullivan Tire. If you're looking for exceptional auto service, head on down to Sullivan Tire. Family owned and operated. They've been serving New England for over 60 years. Their highly trained staff will give you a hand with any of your auto needs. Sullivan Tire offers brand name tires and parts at a price that can't be beat. They're always here to get you there. And by the DCR. The Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation is actively recruiting lifeguards to fill summer lifeguard jobs. If you're a qualified swimmer and are interested in applying for a summer lifeguard position, this is a great opportunity to do what you love and make $1,200 every two weeks while doing it. Visit MassLifeGuard.com to register today. And by Full Spectrum Benefits. If you run a business, big or small, now is the time to engage the team at Full Spectrum Benefits. There is no more time for business as usual. Medical premiums are skyrocketing. Employees get confused in the alphabet soup of healthcare. These guys get it. With over three decades of employee benefit experience, the Full Spectrum team will help you deploy an employee benefit strategy that allows you to focus on managing and growing your business. You spend a lot of money on benefits. They should not be a burden. For a free consultation, call Bill Higgins at 617-872-9944 or visit their website at fullspectrumbenefits.com. And by Highview Custom Builders. Founded in 1990, Highview Custom Builders has overseen countless home renovations across the South Shore, Metro West, and beyond. From a simple fix-up to a full-scale rebuild, Highview Custom Builders is the area leader in designing your dream home and making it the very best it can be. To learn more, contact Steve at HighviewCustom at Hotmail.com. 2-1 lead for BC High. When we come back, third period action in game one of 12 of the 2018 Buddy Ferreira Classic. Hi, BC High. Something's got to give. Eagles with a 2-1 lead over the Harbourman through 30 minutes of play. Michael Grant's goal would stand as the game winner right now. BC High led 1-0 at the end of the first. Hingham tied it up on a John Sullivan offering. But Grant got one back a couple minutes later. That's where we stand now. Jake Levin back alongside Rich McClone. The teams have switched sides for the third period. And Rich, Hingham could not have been happier to get out of that second period. No, they needed to get to that buzzer, regroup. They don't have to do anything stupid. They're only down a goal. They have time, but they cannot afford to go down by two. They go by If they go down two, this game's over. They have to score the next goal. Here comes Peter Kramer. Peter Kramer in, shot right on to Kornak. And even Kornak didn't know where the puck was. The whistle blows, and he stopped it right around his collarbone. Dropped to the ice. They'd already blown the whistle, that went through puck, his legs. That puck, Jake, actually went under the neck protector and hung up in his collar for a second. And uh, he got the whistle. He's lucky because he had no idea where it was. And at, right after the whistle, it fell to his feet and actually got uh, plucked into the net by the Eagles. Hang him the benefit 
beneficiary, I should say, of an early whistle. But that was the right call. The puck was stuck up oh, there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Donahue near point, trying to sling it up a level to Dragon. Peter Kramer with a backhand of the puck. Jake Higgins assumes control for the Harvardman behind the net, looking for Robbie Kornack and misfired. Up ice for Terez. Coverage on him was dragging. Now BC trying to change directions, get back in their attacking end. Big scrum through the official's crease. Emerging was Kramer and Higgins. Knocks it away, up ice, looking for Clark. Clark had it jammed back by Adamson. Stretch pass intended for Terez, out of his reach, and he finally gets it back, but dumps it in. Goes off for a change. Sullivan out there with Carroll. That's the only connection that's worked for the Harriman. Carroll, a drop passer, perhaps a deflection. We're still not really sure. But Sullivan was able to put by Garrity. Here's Grant. Grant's been all over the ice for the Eagles today. Goes behind the net, sends it out in front to the point. Nobody home. Healy will settle it. Puck a bit uneven. Mav Woods calmed it down. Grabbed by Joe Sullivan. Lobbed it in. Glove down by Adamson. Here's Woods. The far side left. Poked away by Jacobs. And that's going to be offsides against BC. 12.43 to go in the third period. Yeah, Hingham uh, unable so far to really get anything going in the offensive zone. Only one shot so far over the first two minutes. That was by the Eagles. The one that got uh, stuck up in the goaltender's equipment. So uh, defensive game really continuing here, but the Eagles have a two to one advantage overall in shots for the night. They came into this period with a 22 to 11 edge and it's now 23. Lackadaisical play by Callow. And I think we're gonna get an interference call. And let me tell you something. BC is gonna go to the box here. And you got to tip the cap there if you're a Harriman fan to Ryan Riley because he sold every bit of that interference because I don't think he was getting to that puck. Callow just a little brain fired at the blue line. Allowed the puck to sail past him. Tried to compensate and Riley, as you said, sold it. So hang him to the power play. 234 into the third period. First special teams opportunity for the Harriman. First power play opportunity for the Harriman. I should say they also killed the penalty in the second period. Yeah, pretty clean game so far. Big opportunity here for Hingham. They really need to make something happen. Clark looking for Terez. Frankie Higgins pins the puck along the end wall. Clark back there with him. Slid beyond Quilty. Thomas Kramer looking for the clear. Gets it up to Lakis. Lakis shorthanded. Knocked out by Robbie Kornack. Up ice for Clark. And he goes back between the legs of Higgins. Higgins going the wrong direction right now. Thomas Kramer, one man wrecking crew shorthanded for the Eagles, causing all kinds of problems on the Hingham breakout, and they finally emerge. This is Clark up the near side left. Clark over the blue line, tucks it into the corner. Quilty will give chase to the end wall. Adamson tries to cock and fire for a clear. Higgins, far point to the near point for Terez. Terez hanging around on this near side left. Sends it across for Clark. Three men high for the Harvardman. That's Higgins for Clark. Clark, pass for Quilty. Quilty back for Higgins. Higgins, a wrister into traffic, and Garrity was ready either way. Frankie Higgins on Corks, a wrister. High, wide off the glass, saved by Terez. Shifts it across for Higgins. Jake Higgins to Frankie Higgins. Curls out of the left wing corner. Lost the puck. Terez doing his best to keep it alive. Frankie Higgins gets it back in the neutral zone, but the Harbourman will have to tag up with about half a minute to go on the man advantage. Here's Frankie Higgins. Higgins for Quilty. A shot, it's high over the crossbar. There's a little bit of real estate. Now Frankie Higgins down for the Harborman with 10.45 left in the third period. Here on the replay, we can see he got hit right in the head there as he gave up the puck on the pass. And he is down. You know, you don't want to speculate, but uh looked like he got that up around the, uh, right around the ear. Trainer Tim Wakefield, the uh, trainer here for the Falmouth High team and the assistant coach on the girls' ice hockey team is uh, attending to him.
don't think we're going to have any penalties called here. And he's getting up with Wakefield's help. I tell you, if he's not able to go the rest of the way, Jake, that's a big loss for the Harbor men here. Skating off completely under his own power, still looks a little dazed, but that is a great sign to see. If you're the Harbor men, and obviously uh, Frankie's health first and foremost, so well, looks like he's okay, and he wants to stay on the ice. I don't think Tony Messina is going to allow that, and he hops back over the boards. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if he goes to the back bench to get checked out or if he stays in the line, and it looks like he's going to stay in the line right now. He hasn't made a move to go to the back bench. Possible the wind got knocked out of him simply. Time will tell. Hang him with about 12 seconds left on the man advantage. Here comes Tommy Kornack trying to go coast to coast. He drops it for Clark. Clark across for Jake Higgins. Jake Higgins tried to force an extra pass to Quilty. Could have been better off shooting that. And that's going to do it for the power play for the Harbormen. Just one shot on goal during the power play chance there for the uh, Harbor men. BC High's PK doing a great job of disrupting Hingham's passing. The Harbor men, you could tell they wanted to run that high umbrella, work the puck around, but it seemed like every time they tried to make the pass to the middle that the uh, BC High stick got a piece of it. Eagles iced the puck, so Hingham will have another attacking end draw. Doesn't look like they can get much zone time, although BC sent that into the protective netting on their own accord, it was Peter Kramer, so another attack and end draw for the Harriman. Looking over at the hanging bench, Frankie Higgins still in the rotation with his line mates, so looks like he's going to return to action sooner rather than later. That's and big news for Hingham because uh, they need the, all the offensive weapons they can find. Only 10.03 left to go. And another icing by the Eagles. A little <laughs> altercation here behind the play. Looks like uh, Caleb Wooden for Hingham and uh, Peter Kramer for the Eagles are uh, getting to know, know one another a little better. Tim Carroll out on the draw for the Harvardman. Danny O'Connell directly across from him for the Eagles. Dropped down and emerging quickly is Dragon with an extra burst. Dumps it off the end wall. Finally not an icing for BC High. Are they going to get any zone time out of it? That remains to be seen. Looks good. Dragon controls the puck. Knocked off the play by Wooden, but O'Connell comes to the rescue. Underneath, Peter Kramer's stick in the slot. That's Donahue. Backhands it to the corner for O'Connell. Donahue Arister from atop the circle and a save by Robbie Kornack. 9.37 to go in the third period. And we can say in regulation, since because even though this is a regular season tournament, you need a winner for the purposes of the tournament, so there will be overtime. I believe it's going to be five minutes of three on three, if it gets to that. Uh, we'll see if we get to that. that but uh, right now, BC High wants no part of that. They want to just get through the next nine and a half minutes uh, with this lead intact and move on to Monday's game. And even if we don't get it here, you get the feeling one of these 12 games will go the extra session. Oh, uh, I think we're going to see some overtime with it at some point. Adamson having a hard time breaking it out of his own end. Kornak rushed up. Can't keep it in for the Harborman. That's Lakis for Kramer across the ice to Thomas Kramer. Adamson joins the rush and his shot's blocked. Thomas Kramer, the last ditch effort, goes off the corner glass. Adamson saves it for the Eagles. Kornak trying to chip it free for the Harborman. They had three players in a tight space. Bounced right around the blue line. Jake Higgins and Thomas Kramer. Frankie Higgins on the ice, by the way, so he is okay. There's Healy for the Eagles. Curls around the half wall. Out up top for Adamson. Gives back for Healy. Healy with Quilty right on top of him. Takes a wrist or save Kornak. Out to the point. What Adamson. A great play by Kornak there. Makes a save and flips it out of the zone himself. Adamson with another wrister, and Kornak with another save. Couldn't hang on, wound up on the stick of Thomas Kramer. That's always dangerous. Mav Woods, oh. a shot off of the stick blade of Jake Higgins. Almost caught the redirect own goal. Talk about deflating. 
unfortunately for Hingham, that doesn't happen. Eight minutes to go in regulation. Harberman definitely dodged a bullet there. That was inches from going in the net, and this would have uh, changed the complexion of this game dramatically. McDonough's offering high off the end glass, finally out of the zone for the Harberman, but Woods slings it across for Adamson. Eagles looking to go right back in. Grant gives chase. His goal would stand as the game winner right now. Turns on the brakes in the near corner. Dances away from Wooden. Gets away from Jacobs as well. Still with a puck on his tape. Curls away from Trevor O'Brien. Now Mav Woods sends it across the ice. It's Donahue. Higgins back out there on the ice. And uh, he's looking like he's looking to hit things right now. So I think he's okay. A deflection through the slot. BC High can't get. That was a Donahue offering. Kornak made the pad save. Donahue grabs it. Top the slot through the legs of Mav Woods. Jacobs around the edges looking for Terez. Hingham can't get it clear. That's McDonough who keeps it alive. McDonough dumps it into the opposite corner. Woods will play it off the carom. I really like McDonough a lot, Jake. He plays with a lot of poise. He's really smart with the puck. He's been really fun to watch today. Jacob Clark has to ice the puck for Hingham. 6.46 left. In regulation, BC High with another attacking end draw coming up. I tell you, we're not quite to desperation time yet, Jake, but we're approaching it. This third period really flying by. We are well by the uh, halfway point with only 6.45 left to go. Is Kramer a wrister curled around and was high over the net. Dragon can't knock it down. Sullivan to the puck. Peter Kramer, it's taken away by Kornak, who's looking to force it up the wing to Tim Carroll. But that's going to be icing against the Harbourman. Down to 6.24 to go. Folks, remember, this is game one of four on My Hockey Live today from Thalmouth. And as a matter of fact, we have a fifth game that's going on at the Canton Ice House. Should be starting up in about half an hour between Zaverian and Framingham. Uh, that's a good one right there, too. Uh, I believe Framingham fighting for their postseason lives, if I'm correct, right? So they are not going to finish with a winning record. However, they won the Bay State Conference carry division. Oh, so they're in. So they are safely in. Zaverian likely done as far as the Super 8 goes. They just clinched their postseason berth the other night. And here's a stretch pass up ice. That was Joseph Kramer, the intended recipient. Good back check by Kornak. Tell you what, that D1 South tournament this year is going to be pretty loaded. It's Quilty. Quilty, a backhander saved by Garrity. Knocked away immediately by Joseph Kramer. Lakers slides it across for Thomas Kramer. And a save by Robbie Kornak. 5.44 left. Uh, make a note right there. 5.44 and Kornak saving the day for Hingham as he's able to slide across his crease and somehow keep that puck out of the net. Keeps this a one-goal game as uh, we are approaching the final five minutes of this uh, one-goal game. Healy keeps it alive for the Eagles. Dragon in the corner. Looking to the slot. Kramer was cutting in. That's a Callow offering score! Owen Callow gives BC a two-goal lead. At 9.32 of the third period, Owen Callow. You know, that's the second time today where the Eagles have scored on a wrist shot from outside. The first goal also was like that. This one not deflected, but Callow, the left-handed shot, comes up near the blue line, gets the puck, it finds him, and he just sends a wrister. It wasn't that hard, but just got one to the net through the traffic, and it beats uh, Kornak upstairs just like that. The Eagles basically Got themselves a huge insurance goal. This, I don't want to say the game's over, but that is going to be a big, tough hill to climb for the Harbormen now. Well, BC, they don't give up more than one goal very often. Giving up two goals is rare. Giving up three goals even more rare. Hengam would need two in the final five minutes and change. BC has worst loss was a 4-1 loss to Don Bosco out of New Jersey. That's back in December. That's also one of the last times they allowed more than two goals in a game. Puck goes up into a girder at the Falmouth Ice Arena. 
Yeah, the Eagles just doing a really good job of controlling the tempo of this game, Jake. They're able to do what they want to do. They've made Hingham have to play their game. The Harbor men, kind of a counterattacking team, but it's tough to counterattack when you can't get out of your own zone. Big insurance goal for Owen Callow. 528, 928 rather. Is he looking for more? Kornak can't stop it. That was a wrister from Timmy Kelly. May have been deflected further down low. I believe it's going to count as Kelly's. If so, that's his second of the game. Well, two goals in less than a minute for the uh, Eagles. And the horse is out of the barn for hang on. Kornak tried to play the puck out of his own end by himself and made the mistake of going up the middle of the ice. He was trying to start the breakout. Unfortunately for him, the Eagles able to deflect it, keep it in the zone, and then I think it probably got in under his right arm into the back of the net. And a three-goal lead is it's insurmountable at this point. The way BC High is playing, it would take a miracle for the uh, for the Harbormen. And you can pretty much say goodnight to the Harbormen. Looks like their drought of winning the Buddy Ferrer Classic is going to extend to a 10th season. Hingham should still feel good about its Super 8 chances. I don't know if I would feel great about not having to play in a play-in game at this juncture, however. Well, that's for the uh, committee to decide. Right now, the uh, Harborman can only control what they can control. And even if they're not able to get out of this one with a W, they still have to play well here in the next two games in Falmouth. Hingham's going to get either Austin Prep or Duxbury. Hingham beat Duxbury 3-0 earlier in the season. You know, that's kind of a... That's kind of a game you, you would like to see. I mean, obviously, Duxbury would love to get through to the winner's bracket, but Hingham versus Duxbury, a little bit of a rivalry there. That's always a fun one to watch. Two of the South Shore's better programs. Historically, getting a chance to go head-to-head -head here in Falmouth. You know, I was discussing on the My Hockey Live podcast the other day with Brandon Hall that... BC High could be in play for the one seed if they win this tournament in the Super 8 as Clark tries to slide across for Terez and again, excellent back checking from the Eagles. And he scoffed at me. He said, no, Central Catholic's the one seed. There's an offering from Wooden that nearly bounced its way in. I said, I think the Eagles can still get onto that very top line. And boy, do they look like, if not the best team in the state today, a team certainly capable of being the best team in the state on a given day. You know, I almost don't know if it matters if you're the one or the two. I, you know, the, other than bragging rights, you're basically going to have to play the best of the best to get through to the state title game anyways. So just getting through and being one of the teams that doesn't have to play a playing game, that's huge for the Eagles. And if they're the one or the two, they're still going to have a tough game either way, you know, a tough round either way you look at it. Lawrence mentioning, of course, it's a new Super 8 format this year, and by new, I mean old. Double elimination, the way it used to be, right up until about, I want to say 2003 was the final year of that original double elimination format. I like the double elimination because it takes away the, uh, you know, the flukiness of the hot goaltender who just happens to stand on his head that one game. And the best of threes that they used since 2013, it just really didn't generate the kind of buzz that uh, I think uh, the powers that be thought it would. Not enough series were going the full three games. The only one that did last year, it was an excellent series between BC High and Walpole. But there was just too many series that were clean sweeps, and here's BC trying to put the exclamation point on this one. Kornak makes a save. Get a little bit of uh, pushing and shoving here and late in the period, you know, two teams have gone to battle for 43 plus minutes and uh, a little bit of ire maybe raised after 43 minutes of hockey. You know, given this new Super 8 format we've been talking about, it's entirely possible these teams see one another again. Oh, absolutely. You know what? And it would be a good game. 
This game was a 2-1 game until a few minutes ago. Right. You know, the Eagles are an explosive team. They get two goals in the span of uh, 54 seconds, if my math is correct. And that's what put it, uh, you know, out of reach. But, you know, the Hingham Harbormen have done enough to compete. They just haven't done enough to win. They weren't able to generate much offensively. And I guess we get some matching penalties here. The boys will be boys. And the those two boys will spend the uh, rest of the day in the penalty box. <laughs> well, game one nearly in the books. We've got Austin Prep and Duxbury coming up at three. Arlington Catholic and Redding coming up at five. And Falmouth Archbishop Williams coming up at seven. I think everybody knew this game was the game of day one. That Falmouth Archie's game is going to be a good little game as well. well. I'll tell you what, the reason I'm looking forward to that game so much is What's on the line for both teams? The Clippers rarely have made the finals of the Buddy Ferreira Classic. I think in the last 10 years, I think they've made it one time, maybe twice. I'd have to, you know, go back and check the history books. Um, but they have a, they're playing for the top seed in D1 South. They, they're not going to make the Super 8, you know, barring, you know, a perfect run here, which would mean probably beating BC High. And as good as the Clippers are, I don't think they're that good um, on that level. Right. They're very, very good, though. They're, they sit at 13, 3, and 3. Yeah. They go 2 and 1 here. Now they're 15, 4, and 3. I mean, that would and be. And BC would leave the South. Yeah. Hingham, although uh, Hingham, their winning percentage isn't as good as Founts, anyways. But if they're in a play in, they. W so here we go. Tony Messina also pulling Kornak for the final two minutes of this one. And Hingham. It's going to have some penalty time. It's six on four right now for the Hardman with the empty net. All right. I didn't see why the Eagles got called with the extra penalty there. It must be roughing. But uh, Hingham uh, throwing caution to the wind here and figuring out what do we have to lose. Jake Higgins a blast. Didn't see its way through to Garrity. And that's just a common theme today for the Hardman. They didn't test Garrity nearly enough. There were maybe two or three great saves he made. They just didn't throw enough quality shots at him. Jake Higgins keeps it away from Thomas Kramer. Lucky there, the Eagles were offside. Otherwise, they would have had a vacant net with an easy shot. Jacob Clark across for Kenny. Kenny took it right back from Terez, and Garrity makes the save. About 60 seconds to go. Kenny shoots, score! Four to two. Oh. Just dialing up a wrist shot from low in the zone, right on the edge of the left wing uh, face-off circle. And he's able to beat uh, the keeper to the glove side, I'm sorry, the uh, stick side there, near side post. And that shot uh, had a vapor trail on it. All right, Hingham has 58 and a half seconds to somehow get two more. Kornak back out on the ice, and he is beyond the hash marks. And Hingham not going to get some of the fresh personnel. They're going to have to go with what they had. It's really their power play unit out there because Terez is back at the point. Frankie Higgins dumps it in. Kornak off at six on five for the Harborman. Frankie Higgins pins Thomas Kramer into the wall. McDonough joining the fray. Bodies flying around all over the place. Mav Woods working on Will Kenny. Will Kenny, Terez. Lost it, and it's cleared out by Dragon, but Jacobs kept alive for the time being for the Harborman. 31 seconds to go. Jake Higgins, long stretch pass for Kenny. Bounced off the body of Lakis. Into an empty net, Michael Grant seals it. Not that there was any doubt. 5-2 Eagles. That's Grant's second of the game. Slightly easier degree of difficulty than his first goal which did, does count as the game winner still, that 2-1 goal. Hingham had a chance there, uh, Jake. There were a lot of bodies behind the net, and they had three guys high in the zone. Almost all the Eagles were down low, but they were able to get the puck to the point there. They would have had a chance to get a shot from the perimeter, maybe a rebound, but BC High doing a good job of getting bodies on the puck and just keeping Hingham from accomplishing anything with that extra man attacker. And now, uh, we're just uh, finishing out the, uh, the final few seconds. Harvman are going to fall to 
four and six. BC High going to improve to 13, four and one. So I'm looking at this Hingham team against other Hingham teams and I see the four losses and I know they made the Super 8 as a play-in team granted two years ago with eight losses. Last year, I believe they had six losses. So as long as nothing wacky happens on Monday or Wednesday, I guess it would be, or actually uh, Thursday if they're playing in the fifth place game, they'd be back here on the final day of the tournament. They should get at least a play-in game, but that's neither here nor there. BC High, they're... They're one of the best teams in the state, and they showed it today. Yeah, they just, you know, they do everything pretty well. It's, it, they're really fun to watch because they're, they're fast. They control the puck really well. They're strong in the neutral zone. They're creative in the offensive end, and they're great on the back end, and the goalie's good. I mean, they're hard to put any holes in their roster. BC High is a pretty complete hockey team. Hingham needs to generate more offensively. Against a team like BC High, you know, two goals, usually not going to do it. And they had one most of the day. But even though the final score, 5-2, like we said earlier, this was a 2-1 game with about, what, five, six minutes to go before the Eagles able to finally put the uh, Harbormen away. Great hockey game, great start to the tournament. I'll tell you, we get 11 more of these, I'll be a happy guy. Rich, fun is yet to begin, hardly. The game that certainly was... Bill, uh, before this one, is the game of the tournament. Lives up to the hype, for the most part. It wasn't an instant classic, but certainly a good all-around game. So now we wait about 15 minutes for game two. Arlen, uh, pardon me, Austin Prep and Duxbury. That'll be coming up, so we'll uh, just run through our sponsors real quick here on MyHockeyLive.com. The DCR. Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation is actively recruiting lifeguards to fill summer lifeguard jobs. If you're a qualified swimmer and are interested in applying for a summer lifeguard position, this is a great opportunity to do what you love and make $1,200 every two weeks. While doing it, visit MassLifeGuard.com to register today. And by Full Spectrum Benefits. If you're on a business, big or small, now is the time to engage the team at Full Spectrum Benefits. There's no more time for business as usual. Medical premiums are skyrocketing. Employees get confused in the alphabet soup of healthcare. These guys get it. With over three decades of employee benefit experience, the Full Spectrum team will help you deploy an employee benefit strategy that allows you to focus on managing and growing your business. Spend a lot of money on benefits. They should not be a burden. For a free consultation, call Bill Higgins at 617-872-9944 or visit their website, www.fullspectrumbenefits.com. And by Sullivan Tire. If you're looking for exceptional auto service, head on down to Sullivan Tire. Family owned and operated, they've been serving New England for over 60 years. Their highly trained staff will give you a hand with any of your auto needs. Sullivan Tire offers brand name tires and parts at a price that can't be beat. They're always here to get you there. And by Highview Custom Builders, founded in 1990. Highview Custom Builders has overseen countless home renovations across the South Shore, Metro West, and beyond. From a simple fix-up to a full-scale rebuild, Highview Custom Builders is the area leader in designing your dream home and making it the very best it can be. To learn more, contact Steve at Highview Custom at Hotmail.com. All right. BC High Five. Hang him to the BC. Ah, uh, the Putty Ferreira Classic is underway. Austin Prep Duxbury coming your way in about 15 minutes here for... Rich McClone and Kevin Booth on production. I'm Jake Lovin. We'll be right back. <laughs> 